Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today's video. Today, we'll be talking about monitoring plans. Uh, monitoring plans are part of the advanced management package. They can be deployed either from the devices in a listing and selecting the type of plan, which would be a monitoring plan. Uh, from the selection, you can do protection, uh, remote management, scripting, or monitoring plans. In this case, we'd be selecting monitoring plans from that device list, or we can go, as I am here, underneath the management hub and go into monitoring plans. Uh, when we go to create these plans, we have some uh, some options here. Uh, we have either a recommended, uh, which kind of gives you a broad spectrum of what can be covered. Certainly, you can remove and edit some of these. So if we went into this and we didn't care about the GPU temperature, certainly we could remove those alarms. Uh, or we could conversely go in and create a plan and build it out from custom. Right. So from custom, we add an additional piece in here, uh, which is the monitors. Uh, on custom objects via scripts, right? So you have that capability as well to build out those uh, more custom checks. Uh, we will also be adding more pre-builds um, you know, as, as subsequent uh, versions of the agent roll out and we add more to that uh, pre-selected list, which is rather voluminous at the moment and covers most of the things that are part of a monitoring package uh, for an MSP at the moment. Uh, but again, I could go in and create a custom level uh, <clears throat> uh, check, right? So I could call it something specific, right? I could give it a, a variance name, right? So I could call it whatever I want to call it. Um, if there's a script to be run uh, that I would want to, uh, you know, to check and see if this um, service was running. Again, that's pretty baseline, but maybe a DB mount status, right? So things of that nature, you create a script to check those things, select your script from uh, your scripting repository, uh, ones that you've created, tested, and approved, uh, or once some of the pre-builds that we have, these are just a few here that I have uh, quickly at hand. Uh, we can select when we want to run that, which account is going to execute it. So it's either a system level account, so i.e. an admin level account on those devices. So the main joined or Mac OS, right? So you're going to run as that system level account um, or root account, if you will. Um, how long we're going to allow that to run. Uh, what sort of, if we return a, a false um, to the script, right? So if, again, a Windows service or a, a DB was not mounted, right? or uh, became unmounted, right? So we could run that and check that. And if it came back as uh, a, a false, right? So via that script, you get a, a false return. You could select your severity, um, again, uh, frequency. So until the check passes or until we've remediated the incident, uh, if it does um, uh, fix itself, right? So auto resolution. So, you know, in that case of the TV mount status, it won't automatically correct itself. However, um, if there were um, capable checks that we're going to put in play that can auto resolve, which there are a great many, uh, we can set that auto resolution piece as well. Uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the other functions within here. So I'll just grab a couple of baseline uh, checks that we could run against this. Uh, the first thing I want to point out here is we have um, two different options here. So we can either run by threshold-based checks or anomalous-based checks with machine learning. Uh, anomalous-based checks as a industry standard uh, are they kind of a pre a, pre-runtime, that training mode, if you will, um, it is set to what is the standard of 21 days. Um, anything short of that will likely or has a much higher probability to give a false positive on those alarms. 21 days kind of is a baseline for anomalous space uh, alarms. So you can see the behavior of the machine over a period of time. Um, <clears throat> if we did not want to receive uh, any alerts, right, we could turn that, that piece off, allow that anomalous piece to build out, and then after that time, engage normal behavior. Uh, we could look at the threshold base check. So for the CPU temperature, we could say anything above 85 centigrade uh, for a, a period of five minutes or whatever time period we wish to designate um, <clears throat> to send us a warning, a critical, an error uh, level alarm. Obviously, this would be very much a warning level alarm. Uh, how is the alert frequency going to happen? So until it, it clears itself, so i.e. fans engage, or if it doesn't after five minutes, uh, maybe engage them to check the device or... Uh, check the fan status or any number of items this is when we're talking about CPU temperature to try to remediate this auto resolution could happen if the machine runs hot, right? It could clear itself after five minutes or 10 minutes, right? So it could allow a, a, a pass to come through and auto resolve that alarm. <clears throat> we're also able to add some, some pieces in here. So um, if there's some automatic response actions we want to take, we could have um, you know, run a remote script to fix things. So, you know, in the case of potentially, again, a Windows service being stopped, we could try to run a script to start that service, right? So we could specify the Windows service that we want, and then we go ahead and run that script against it. Again, this is clearly for Windows. Uh, we would be able to uh, execute that script as a response action to try to clear the alarm and self-heal, if you will. Um, 
and we're also able to go in and, and edit these items later. So if we were to save this plan and we want to edit them, we could certainly do so. Uh, we also make it very scalable uh, with monitoring alert uh, plans, uh, customized alarms. So you could potentially build out packages uh, of what you would consider an SLA for remote monitoring on a workstation or on a server, right? And you could scope out all those alarms. And what you're able to do at that juncture is take this plan and go ahead and export it and then quickly import it across all of your various clients. So using that multi-tenancy, in this case, we're in AAA design. If I want to fly to Harrison Contractor and Superior Dental, in this case, I could then import those plans. And then uh, from that uh, blank space on that line, as it were, you could add those workloads, select the workloads that you wish to apply to, and then scope those out and push those out quickly. So it's a very scopable piece. Uh, just like all of our protection plans, we're able to export those uh, to have that leverageable across uh, various types of organizations. Of course, tweaks may need to happen, but if you are uh, running something that is a, a bit more bog standard or something that might be a bit more uh, a, a broad spectrum, right, type of alarms package uh, that you're rolling out is easily doable. Thank you for your time. Bye.